I'm crazy enough to take on Batman, but the IRS, no, thank you. Recently, I've fallen into a seemingly never-ending pit of darkness. And what is that pit? But the shocking amount of superhero animated shows that exist. It feels like every superhero that has ever existed has got an animated series. Even a character like Constantine has his own animated show. Damn, even Vixen got a show? Who the heck's the Ray? The point is, there's a lot of superhero shows and I've been sucked into that rabbit hole as of late, slowly making my way through each one. I began my journey with one of the most iconic, Batman the Animated Series. I've already made a video on that show which I'll link at the end of this one, but suffice to say, I really like that show just like everyone else seems to. And then I made my way to the new Batman Adventures, again I've made a video on that, link at the end, but to sum it up, it's a really underrated and underappreciated show that I wish more people spoke about. So given that I really liked both Batman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures, I was very excited to jump into Batman Beyond as this was a direct continuation of both of these shows. In Batman Beyond we follow Terry McGuinness, a teenager who's taken up the mantle of Batman in the future. All whilst our Batman, Bruce Wayne, guides him by acting as Terry's guy in the chair. Guy in the chair. Batman Beyond has a very strong legacy. So strong that they've been trying to get a Batman Beyond film off the ground for years. Both a live action version and an animated version. That Batman Beyond film with Spider-Verse animation would go so hard, I would watch that day one. Just greenlight the film and take my money Warner Brothers, you cowards. <clears throat> but anyway, I'd only ever heard good things about this show, which is slightly surprising given the context. When someone says to you, think of a superhero, who do you first think of? Now you might have said Spider-Man, but if you didn't, you'd probably think of Batman. And I know there's going to be some troublemaker who's like, well actually I thought of Hawkeye first, well good for you. But most people usually either think of one of these characters. And that's because a character like Batman has achieved true iconic status where the vast majority of people love his character. So a show centred around a Batman that isn't Bruce Wayne being really well loved was a little surprising to me. Especially given how nowadays people want their projects to be as faithful and make as few changes to a character as possible. But the reason why Batman Beyond is so beloved is because Terry McGuinness is genuinely a great character. Do I think he's as good as Bruce Wayne? No, not by a long shot, but I still found myself really enjoying and rooting for this character. In terms of characterization, he kind of reminds me of Dick Grayson, Nightwing, which is probably why I and a lot of other people really like this version of Batman. Unlike Bruce Wayne, Terry is quite talkative during missions. He can be very serious when it's necessary, but is also able to crack a few jokes here and there. Terry's personality bursts out of him in every scene. And I love that we get to see Terry slowly change over the course of the series. He's a troubled youth who is given the opportunity to make up for past mistakes by becoming Batman. This results in Terry being quite naive and very sympathetic towards his enemies. He believes that because he was able to redeem himself and turn over a new leaf, that anyone can. And it causes him to clash a lot with Bruce, who is generally more apathetic towards Terry's opponents. The world of Batman Beyond, especially this iteration of Gotham, is a very dark one and that's something that Terry slowly realises. In a lot of ways, you do side with Terry and hope that these villains are able to reform. Yet time and time again, Bruce is proven right and it results in Terry hardening as a person. Every time this situation happens, you hope that a character will prove Terry right or that Terry won't become too hardened. Because this show has shown what happened to characters like Bruce and Barbara Gordon and Tim Drake. And it's a future that you don't want for Terry. Yet with each passing episode, it feels like Terry's fate becomes more and more sealed. And by the end of season 3, it sadly seems like he's destined to live out a life similar to his mentor. Speaking of which, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about Bruce Wayne in this show, and the other legacy characters as well. In recent years we've seen a lot of our old heroes be deconstructed and turned into grumpy old men. I am looking at you Luke Skywalker and Indiana Jones. Unlike a lot of people, I don't really like this approach to my favourite characters. I want to see them be cool and happy, not just a shell of their former selves. And in a lot of ways, this is how Bruce Wayne is treated in this show. He's this grumpy old man, 
sucking on his heart pills so that he can sit around his empty mansion all by himself. It's not really the end point many would want for this character. However, the difference between Bruce and, say, Luke Skywalker is that Bruce becoming a grumpy old man makes complete sense, because even in his younger years, he was this jaded loner with his eyes squarely on the prize of freeing Gotham from the shackles of corruption and chaos. Of course, he'd end up all alone. It makes total sense. And I love the opening of this show where we see why Bruce gave up being Batman. To see Batman being forced to use a gun due to his body failing him even for just a second was a great signal to both us and Bruce himself that it was time for him to hang up the cape. It was a really shocking moment and the best reason I could think of for him choosing to retire. So whilst I generally hate this approach to characters, I think Bruce Wayne in Batman Beyond is the one exception given his personality. However, it's not just Bruce that gets this treatment. This also applies to both Barbara and Tim, who we get to see in the excellent Return of the Joker film, neither of whom are living their best life. I'm just going to be honest here, I completely hated Barbara in this show. She was just annoying. She was constantly getting in Terry's and Bruce's way as commissioner, and it pissed me off because she used to be Batgirl. I get that things went south with Tim and the whole gang fell apart, but she's such a hypocrite in this show. Jim Gordon and Batman had a good working relationship, why can't she have one with Terry? And I absolutely despise the weird revelation that Batgirl and Batman were a thing in this universe. I remind you that this is a sequel to the new Batman Adventures. In that show, Batgirl and Nightwing were into each other. They were canon. So it's really just genuinely gross that Batman and Batgirl had intimate relations. Ignoring the age gap and power dynamic for a second here, how could Bruce do his son Dick like that? I would never talk to my dad again if he did what Bruce and Barbara did. Their relationship really negatively affects how I look at the new Batman adventures given Batgirl's prominence in that show and it also negatively affects how I look at both Bruce's and Barbara's character in this show. And then in Return of the Joker, we get to see what happened to Tim. I'm not going to spoil the events of Return of the Joker because I think it's a good film but let's just say that Tim Drake got messed up by the Joker, almost as bad as what the Joker did to Jason Todd. And his life in the Beyond timeline is also not what I think many Tim Drake fans would want for the character. When I first watched this show, I was actually really disappointed that Dick Grayson didn't show up even once, especially given how integral he was in both Batman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures. But considering what happened to Bruce, Barbara and Tim, Perhaps it's a mercy that we never learn what fate befell Dick in this series. They'd have probably had it be that, I don't know, Dick Grayson gets severely wounded when Batman inadvertently lets him get shot by the Joker, which leads to him being temporarily paralysed and losing his right eye, and then Terry McGuinness would visit him accusing him of being one of the villains in the episode, a new version of a villain from Batman's Rogue Gallery. I don't know who should we go with. Let's just use Hush as an example for no reason. And then it would be revealed that Hush was actually a clone of Dick Grayson, created by Amanda Waller to replace Bruce as Batman. But then the clone obviously went evil, because of course it did, and became the new Hush and was also younger, and missing the battle wounds that Dick had. And then the clone died in an explosion, as all clones do. And when Bruce tried to reconnect with Dick, Dick just completely pushed him away, because he wants nothing to do with him. But that's just my wild guess as to what they might have done with Dick, had he been in Batman Beyond. Wait, what's that? That's actually what happened to Dick in the Batman Beyond comic? I don't think I'd be bothered at all by any of this if it wasn't for the fact that this series was a sequel to both Batman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures. It does cast a new light on those series when I rewatch them, now that I know the sad and depressing ends for each of these characters. Although I do like when the show does this with the villains. The Mr. Freeze episode was great and I love seeing what happened to the likes of Bane and the Joker. Especially with the Jokers being a gang in the Beyond world. There's loads of little references like that throughout this entire show, like Terry wearing Dick's suit in one episode. But ignoring that, I do really like this series and the characters in it. I do however think that this is the weakest of the three Batman animated shows. Like Batman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures, Batman Beyond is episodic and for the most part you can just jump into any episode. 
Like those shows, that means some episodes are better than others, but I think Batman Beyond has the most consistent quality out of the three shows. But that consistency is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, Batman Beyond never hits the lows of Batman the Animated Series or the new Batman Adventures, but on the other hand, there isn't really a high point or a standout episode in Batman Beyond. Don't get me wrong, there's certainly some great and memorable Batman Beyond episodes, but there aren't any Batman Beyond episodes that compete with Heart of Ice, or Feet of Clay, or Two-Face, or Almost Got Him, from Batman the Animated Series. And the same is true of the new Batman Adventures, with episodes like Growing Pains, and Over the Edge, and Old Wounds, and Mad Love. Batman Beyond is a good show, but I personally didn't like it as much as the two shows that preceded it. I do think Terry McGuinness is an excellent protagonist, and Will Friedel did an excellent job of bringing the character to life. And I don't think I need to say that the iconic Kevin Conroy was pitched perfect as Bruce Wayne in this series. And whilst it might not have seemed like it in this video, I did really like how dark and occasionally depressing this show could be. Batman Beyond has some truly great villains, from the likes of Ink, to Spellbinder to Shriek, to the Royal Flush Gang. And best of all, Blight. Blight was a fantastic villain, and I hate that he only appeared in the first season. I don't know why he didn't return after season 1, since everyone seems to agree that he was the best villain in the series. But for whatever reason, he didn't, and it feels like such a waste of a great character. At least he apparently returns in the comics. Which makes sense, because he was basically Terry's arch nemesis. But regardless, I love the villains, and I love that they didn't play around either. They were out for blood, and they often got it. The villains alone make this show worth watching, and I do like some of the supporting characters too, especially Max. She was a bit annoying at first, essentially trying to be Terry's Robin, but I like that she learned the harsh reality of Terry's world and became a good friend and confidant for him. Batman Beyond is worth watching, and so is its film, Return of the Joker. It has stood the test of time and provides a unique viewing experience, even in the crowded market of so many animated Batman shows. If you're a fan of Batman, then I highly recommend this show to you, and I'm glad that I can finally close the book on this era of Batman now that I've finally finished watching this show. Huh? What's that? This isn't the end? Terry actually shows up at the end of Justice League Unlimited? And that's the end of this whole universe? So I have to watch Justice League and Justice League Unlimited? Okay, okay, alright, alright, no, I, I can do that. But wait, there's more? There's three seasons of a superhero animated series that I need to watch. Then there's four seasons of Static Shock. Then there's the Zeta Project. And then on top of all that, I've got to watch those two Justice League shows as well. And then I will have finished this specific DC Animated Universe. Hmm.